in, everybody. Can you feel the peace in the room? Let's stay there for just a second, yeah? We don't want to miss an opportunity. I know that we, we've been present. We've been worshiping. And as Darren was, was praying, but I don't want to, I don't want to miss a moment. Thank you, God. Oh, I like this. We're going to have fun this summer. Thank you, God. Thank you for your presence in the room. Thank you for peace. Just like Meg and Kenyell were singing, all anxiety bows. All anxiety bows. Thank you, God, for peace. Anybody, if you're watching online, if you have been plagued with anxiety, just stay a little bit longer. Stay connected. The way that you encounter God, the way that you interact with God, stay here because it's definitely very present in this room. And we're a generous people. You know, God has no problem moving right through the, the airwaves, through the internet. So thank you, God. Anxiety bowing right now because of the presence of a God who is love. Yeah, if you need that, just take that today. Amen. All right, guys, I'm excited. Um, I'm going to ask you to turn to two places in your Bible. We're going to jump into the word of the Lord. Um, it's good to be together. Why don't you, if you have your Bibles, open up to two places, Joshua chapter 1 and John chapter 1. If you don't have your Bibles with you, it's a good time to pull out your phone and jump onto a Bible or into a Bible app because I want you to follow along. There's power in the Word of God. As you're making your way there, I want to make a quick announcement. I am excited about this. We are actually going to be hosting a PRISM conference in October. October 14th, there you go, October 14th and 15th. And uh, for those of you who may not know, for the last couple of years, God has been speaking to me a lot uh, about his heart for equality and the need for women to step confidently into who he's created them to be. Because without it, the plans that he has for both men and women get crippled. So if you are a female, <laughs> what is that about the females? There's always some, some voice that comes afterwards. We have no problem with just getting our voice out there. Uh, if you're a female, save the date. Again, October 14th and 15th, registration will open soon. And if you are a man and you feel a prompting, like you have it in your heart that you just want to partner with God to see more equality come in the body of Christ. I don't know. Come up here and talk to me when we wrap up today, and we'll see what God might have for that, okay? We want to honor whatever God wants to do. So are you guys in Joshua 1 yet? Yes, Julie. Like, there's enough. I can see everybody. Yes, Julie. Thumbs up. There we go. Joshua 1. Okay. I want to ask a two, this two-part question as we jump in, all right? Here we go. What would you do in life if you were 10 times braver? And what would you do if money were no object? Ooh. Come on, think about it. I want you to take a second and actually ask the Lord, what would I do if I was braver and money was no object, God? Here's why that's important. Because there's a very, very good chance that your answer is what you are actually supposed to be doing. I'm not saying that it may be the exact season to do it. But what I've found is when Often when we have things that are stirring on the inside of us, if we don't do anything with them, if God is stirring, he's churning things, he's not letting something go away that you have on the inside, if we're not doing something with them, then often fear has reduced us as a people.
I want to talk to you today about living brave. And the reason it's important is simple. Because without courage, you and I aren't going to enter in to the fullness of what God intends for our lives. We need bravery. We just need to know where to find it because God's ready to give it. All right, so we are again in um, Joshua chapter 1. No, let me pause. Keep your finger in Joshua chapter 1. I want to tell you about a poll that I took a couple of years ago. I felt like God just said, hey, reach out to some friends. This was before I was on social media. So this was all via text. He said, reach out to some friends and ask this question. So I, I took this poll and the question was, what would you do if you were braver? Guys, I was shocked at how many of you. It was right here in the community. Like I reached out to just, like I said, a, a bunch of friends. The amount of texts I got back was even overwhelming for a girl like me, and I get a lot of texts. Hundreds of responses. And I felt like the Lord said to come in today with, with some of them, just to read them, to highlight, he highlighted some of them, and I wanna read them to you, because this is important. I want to, like, we're doing life together. If we're really going to do not just church, if we're going to show up and actually start to exercise what it means to be church, we do life together, we get real. I don't always have a microphone in my hand, but you know what I mean. Like, we get real. We want to hear each other's stories. I'm going to read some of the things that people texted me a while back that were, if they were braver, they would do these things. And some of them are gonna, gonna give you a check on the inside because God's put similar things on the inside of you. What would I do if I was braver? I'd be vulnerable and I'd step fully into relationships. I'd reach out to people from the past to make amends or simply apologize and get closure. I wouldn't let fear of rejection rob me of the adventures God has for me. I'd stop waiting on others. I'd cut ties with unhealthy relationships. I'd ask the hard questions and have the conversations without fear of getting in trouble or not knowing the answers. If I was braver, I'd start dating again. I'd believe the voices of those around me that say that I'm seen, I'm heard, and I'm valued. I'd move away from what's not working and I'd have faith that there's something more for me. If I was braver, I'd be okay to be alone. I'd stand my ground when I'm misunderstood instead of turning on myself and assuming I'm probably wrong. I'd be more honest with my spouse about how I've felt hurt in our relationship and why. I'd believe for breakthrough in my family instead of being locked up over the, or by the years of pain and disappointed over me not seeing it happen. Is there anybody in the room? If fear wasn't in the picture, I'd sing loud gospel music. If fear wasn't in the picture, I'd take piano and voice lessons. I'd pursue my dream of becoming an author. I'd take a season to travel extensively to all the places I've always wanted to see. I'd release the e-course I've created. I've been stalling because I worry no one will buy them. If I was braver, I'd complete my functional medicine certificate. I'd go back to school to get my master's in mental health counseling. I'd start a YouTube channel. I'd start a Truth Is talk show. I'd pioneer a homeschool network in a state that's been highlighted, and, and I would name it Wild and Free. <laughs> I'd invest in stocks. I'd sell my house. I'd buy an investment property. We're almost done. If fear wasn't in the picture, I'd ask for more money at work. I'd quit my job and start my own company. I'd deal with my social anxiety so I'd no longer avoid certain business situations. I'd jump into the, a new career and trust God to work out all of the unknowns. 
I'd start a program that helps people break free from addiction and sexual strongholds. I'd expand the footprint of my organization by launching courses I've designed and promoting my brand message. This is important, guys. I'd reach out to investors to take my business ideas to the next level. I'd start an online Amazon drop shipping store. I can't even make this stuff up. I've saved up, listen to what they add. I've saved up for the past two years to do it, but now that I've got the money, I'm scared to risk losing it all. There's purpose in me sharing these guys, stay with me. If I was braver, I'd trust myself more. I'd stop second guessing everything I do and I say. I'd let go of the things that God's no longer calling me to and I'd step into the new pursuits and passions I'd feel him highlighting. I wouldn't default back to what was safe and familiar. I'd let go of some of the expectations I've put on myself. If I was braver, I wouldn't let a season of illness define me anymore. I'd travel back to the nation of my birth to visit family. They added this, fear of complications with my US visa has kept me from seeing them for years. I'd get back into the foreign mission field. I'd plug back into my community for real. I wanna tell you again that there are so many things that are stirring on the inside of us. We can't let fear reduce us anymore. We have to learn how to live brave. The Bible is filled with testimonies of courage. You guys know it. You're in the house of the Lord. Joshua is a prime example of it. You know his story. I'll just ad lib here. So he grows up in Egypt. He grows up as a slave. Freedom wasn't modeled anywhere around him. He needed bravery to survive Egypt's oppression, to trust God at the Red Sea, he needed courage. He also needed courage in the wilderness when a short trip took a very, very long time. And it took courage, supernatural courage, for him to not lose heart when Moses suddenly dies. Come on, you guys know the story. Have you ever felt like you've traveled far and when you were right on the brink of entering a promise from God, something was unexpectedly lost? Joshua knew that feeling. So here's what God says to him in the first few verses, verses six through nine in chapter one. He says, Joshua, be strong and brave. You must lead these people so that they can take their land. This is the land that I promised their fathers that I would give to them. Be strong and brave. Be sure to obey all of the teachings my servant Moses gave you. If you follow them, you will be successful in everything you do. Always remember what is written in the book of the teachings. Study it day and night. Then you will be sure to obey everything that's written there. If you do this, you will be wise and successful in everything. Remember, I commanded you to be strong and brave. Don't be afraid. The Lord your God will be with you everywhere you go. So with that, Joshua enters in. And he moves into the promised land with the people. It becomes theirs. I want to celebrate the one-offs of bravery. I want to celebrate that moment when Joshua stepped in. He said yes in the midst of Moses, what he his expectations of how something would look like. He said yes after he had this encounter with the Lord and he stepped into a place of bravery and millions of people was, were able to follow behind him. They, they obtained something that was in the heart of the Lord for a very long time. I celebrate the one-off acts of bravery. I celebrate everything that I read here from this poll. Just the, there was 50 that I chose. Out of hundreds and hundreds, I felt the Lord say, choose these. I celebrate those one-off acts of bravery 
stepping into those things that have been stirring on the inside. But I'm telling you, what God is really after is us cultivating a lifestyle of bravery, bravery with him. So what does that look like? We're doing it family style, even though, again, I'm up here with a microphone in my hand. Come on, think about it. What does it look like to have a lifestyle of bravery? Well, let's start with an easy one. Healthy relationships. Come on. A lifestyle of bravery, an example, a perfect example is healthy relationships. It takes courage to do a relationship with people. It takes courage to be single. There you go. It takes courage to be married. It takes courage to be a parent. To have the conversations that can feel really hard, but to have them in an honorable way. To stay present in the midst of great disappointment, pain, possible betrayal, to believe the best about another person who maybe doesn't understand what you're trying to communicate to them or what you've been through, it takes bravery. It takes bravery not to put up those walls and to step back, to disengage, because we need to protect ourselves. Come on. We need bravery. That's just relationships. Oh, I hear this one. It's for somebody. If it's for you, take it. If we're parents, we need bravery not to try and control our kids. And we need bravery as a kid when we realize our own misses have put us in places that God never intended and we need to be brave not to come under guilt, shame, and condemnation. We need a lifestyle of bravery cultivated on the inside of us. We just finished counterculture series. If you guys aren't familiar with that, that's Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. It's the culture of the kingdom. We need courage to live the way that Jesus tells us his people are called to live. And again, God has it for us. We just need to know where to find it. And it's right here in Joshua chapter 1. We just need to view it through the lens of the new covenant. So why don't you jump back into Joshua chapter 1 with me. We're going to look at verses 8 and 9. Always remember what's written in the book of the teachings, studying it day and night. If you do this, you, there you go. It's right behind me. Give it a good read. I'm going to ad lib. Here's what God, in essence, says to Joshua. He says, this is what I've called you to, but you're going to need to be brave and courageous to actually step into it. And here's how you're going to get there. You're going to be in the, the book of the teachings, and you're going to remember that the Lord will be with you wherever you go. I remember a season a long time ago, but it's marked me forever. I remember a season when I needed bravery that was, <laughs> that was above and beyond anything that I could work up on, on, my, on the inside of my own self. Has anybody else ever been there? It was a season when my husband and I first got married. Oh, we had such good, we did it with the best of intentions. <laughs> we thought everything would be wonderful. It worked itself out. God is faithful, 28, 29 years later. But in the beginning, what was needed I didn't have an understanding of how to engage with, how to, to partner with. So I wanted out because the pain was too much, but God asked me to stay. There was so much brokenness from where we came individually, so much un, 
unresolved pain that we didn't know how to function together in a healthy way. So I did Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. I did it. I got in the Word every day, and I remembered that the Lord was with me wherever I went. And you know what? I got some real moments of strength and courage, and I was grateful for it. But there was more. That wasn't going to be enough. Without the revelation of Jesus and what he's done, Joshua, those verses in Joshua that are behind me, they're just simply good spiritual instruction, guys. What God is looking for is fullness, not just good spiritual instruction. Now, you should be in your Bible. You should have a conscience, conscious understanding that God is with you wherever you go. But if you stop in truths like this, you've missed the bravery that the Father has waiting for you. And you're going to find yourself taking poles like this in the Spirit and maybe being reduced by fear and never entering into the very things that God created you for or at least wants you doing in certain seasons. Do you hear me? Okay. God is after Christ-like courage. Everybody say, Christ-like courage. That's what he's after. He's after a lifestyle of bravery. He's after the uh, bravery that has the ability to, to release breakthrough into every area that it goes. Because like Darren said earlier, this has never been just about us. We love having a full basket in the spirit. But God gives so that we can enjoy and then we can give away. He's looking for Christ-like courage to grow up big and strong on the inside of us so that everywhere we go, breakthrough is coming off of our lives. Breakthrough is coming into all the other people around us. As a lifestyle, not just as one-offs. And this is where John chapter 1 comes in. Why don't you turn there with me real quick? I'm going to read the first four uh, verses. John 1, 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. Jesus is the Word. Joshua 1 says, be in the book of the teachings. Study it day and night. Always remember what's written there. Time with Jesus. Not just memorizing scripture, <laughs> but letting scripture memorize you, the person of the word. Having a conscious, renewing your mind to the truth that he is with you always, the word of God, studying him. Like, it said, like uh, God said to, to Joshua, study it day and night. What does that mean practically? I have a job. I'm raising kids. I have life. Like, what does that mean? It's kind of like that phrase, pray without ceasing, and people get all jacked up. They're like, well, how am I supposed to do that? Listen, the gospel is easy. A child can do it. Put your focus on Jesus. Study, study. What does that mean? Go to the gospels. Look at his life. L watch how he engaged with people who were hungry for things that were mysterious at the time, things that they hadn't partaken of before. Watch him as he speaks with people who are humble. It made them brave. Meditate on the teachings. Study him day and night. Recognize Jesus as the word. But there's more. Go to verse 14. The beginning of the verse. 
and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is what you need to remember from this entire conversation I'm having with you today. Without a deep understanding of the finished work of Jesus, we can read our Bibles and we can have one-offs, which I celebrate, acts of bravery, but we will never enter into the fullness of what the Father and the Son are waiting for. Jesus was the word that became flesh. Well, Romans 8, 29 says that Jesus is the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Stay with me. So in essence, God puts himself in flesh, not just once with Jesus, but every single time that someone is born again. That's why 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says those who are joined to the Lord become one spirit with him. My point is that, a, is that a lifestyle of bravery gets cultivated as we learn to live consciously reconnected to God. Jesus was the firstborn among, men, among many. Jesus in the wilderness. I want you to think about that for a second. I was thinking about it as I woke up. Literally, I woke up and God's like, I want you to think about Jesus in the wilderness. I'm like, okay. So here's just a couple of the things that I jotted down first thing this morning. Jesus is in the wilderness. God was cultivating bravery there. Jesus didn't need bravery to face the devil. He needed bravery not to skip the process the Father that was asking him to walk through. It's no different for us. Here's what I've found. Religion gets very devil conscious. But Jesus never moved in reaction to the devil. He always moved in response to the Father. Jesus cultivated his lifestyle of bravery by living consciously connected. And we will too. So I want to ask you, Mm. No, I don't want to ask you that yet. Because we have a few more minutes. Usually I never have enough minutes. Okay. I'm going to talk this out loud as I'm thinking it through. Jesus in the wilderness. Somewhere in the book of Luke, I think it's Luke chapter 2, we learn that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature before, or some verses say in favor, before God and men, right? Jesus was fully God, but he was fully man. So when he goes out into the wilderness, led by the Holy Spirit, And the Father's looking to cultivate a lifestyle of bravery, my words, in Jesus. Jesus was fully God, but he was still growing in favor. What if Jesus was actually growing in his consciousness of his connection to the Father? What if, because he's the first of many brethren, and he's our, he's our example in all things, what if Jesus was learning in that moment, one of the things he was learning in that moment was to believe the fullness of all that he was on the earth to be, to do, 
but we never, we know this much from the, ki- the, the culture of the kingdom, it's never about doing, it's always about first, it's always about being first. So if Jesus is getting revelation as he's in that place, that, that prayer and fasting, I've heard it said by a wise man once, that uh, when you go into a time of fasting, you usually go in expecting to encounter God, right? I mean, like, you're, I want to meet you, God. So there's a, there's, there's a, there is a hope in it. Well, what if Jesus went into that time of fasting with the same type of expectation? I want to meet you, Father. I know that there's things. I know the story about my life. It's written in the scrolls. I know that I have communion with you. I'm, I, I know what I came to do. But in the, at the same time, he's growing in wisdom and stature, growing in favor with God and with man. Maybe the revelation of his own connection to the Father is starting to be cultivated so that he can not only live this lifestyle of bravery for him and the purpose that God has for him, but be the example, the firstborn of many for us. So I want to ask you, what is God calling you to do that that requires courage? I gave you lots of examples, not only from the poll, but just about relationships with yourself and with other people. What is God calling you to do that requires courage? I want to exhort you to step into it. Even if it's just a little step in that direction, I want to encourage you to do it. Because here's what I know. We are kidding ourselves if we think that we are going to step into big acts of bravery if we're not practicing by doing little ones every day. I can, I can get up here and preach some promises to you guys. And I've spoken them for a lot of years over myself, and there's weight on them. But we have to marry them to the practical reality of day in, day in and day out life. We have to take steps small steps in the direction of bravery to exercise a big muscle for things that are supernatural. Or we just got a lot of Christianese hype going on and the world doesn't need hype. The world needs power from another age. And you are here for a time such as this, just like me, to be those vessels. It's going to take bravery for you to believe it. Not just when you're sitting in church, but when you're sitting across the table for someone and you know that you have to have the conversation. Or you're on social media and you know that the Father's saying, please do not judge them. Or when somebody cuts you off in traffic. Or you're on on hold for a very, 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 very long time. Because somebody's billed you something that you don't actually know. Oh, and they're not helping you. Like, and you believe the best about them. Or you feel that the Father's saying, will you believe the best about them? You need bravery to do that from another age, from another realm. But it's waiting. And it's not just up here somewhere. Over here. Here is bravery. It actually lives deep on the inside. Who is going to tap in in a healthy way, not some uh, new agey way? Who is going to find out out of friendship with God, how to connect to that deep place and tap into the finished work of the cross so that rivers of bravery start to flow outside of their bellies into the into the marketplace, into the school system, into the, the, the political system, into the church, into families. Who are going to be? It's you. It's not somebody you see on TV. It's not somebody you follow on a podcast. It's you. So why don't you stand up and let me pray for you for bravery. What would I do if I were braver, God? If you didn't ask him before when I started, why don't you ask him now? What would I do if fear wasn't in, wasn't in the equation, God? And if um, money wasn't an object, 
If I was just a little bit braver, God, what would I do? Father, I thank you for your kind of stirring on the inside of men and women right now that are hearing the sound of my voice. I thank you for divine assignments. I thank you for callings and giftings. And I thank you for the ease that comes Holy Spirit, just increase sensitivity to everyone hearing the sound of my voice. God, I thank you for the ease that comes, that helps sons and daughters to tap in, to reconnect in a conscious way to the Father through the Son. Wherever there is woundings, unmet expectations, disappointment, anything, fill in the blank, that would wanna pull, have them draw back from the things that you are whispering, I want you to be brave in this area. I want you to be brave. God, I thank you for coming right now and touching those places on the inside. I ask you, God, to remind each of my friends throughout the coming weeks of the areas you want them to be brave in and then show them how practically, God, for them individually, Show them practically how they can partner with Jesus to do it together. Strong and courageous. Strong and courageous. Jesus, you are the key to bravery, to courage that knows no end. Thank you, God for building friendship in this moment. Hey, it's not on him, he's waiting, he's been waiting, it's on us. Thank you for courage to say yes and to go in and build deeper relational connection with you, Jesus, in our day-to-day -day life. It's a simple message, but it has profound implications. I am one with God because of Jesus. And I will bring that oneness, haha, <laughs> Genesis 1. Out of oneness, they will bring forth God's likeness into every part of the planet. Thank you, God. Men and women, young and old, rich in the natural, poor in the natural, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, every son and daughter, oneness in the name of Jesus, embraced and purposely partnered with to see the greatest move of the kingdom that any of us have ever seen on the planet. And everybody said, amen, amen. Thanks for joining us today, guys. We're gonna worship just a little bit more and um, we'll be back here again next Sunday. One more sec. He's got something for us. Can we give it up for Julie? That was an amazing word. That was so well communicated and super relevant. As we end today, um, we have to get our kids, but I want to give space for something. I felt like the Lord said, give people permission today to make a move, to make a decision. And that doesn't mean that you have to have everything planned out. I think there's a lot of nuance to this. We need to bounce our ideas off of individuals that we trust and get insight. So I'm not talking about like, hey, here's what I'm going to do and it starts tomorrow. But I felt like there's some things stirring in some of your hearts that he wants you minimally just to come up and just get some prayer for and just say, hey, I, I feel some unction along these lines. Let me share this really quickly. 
When we were first starting this church, we were about three years in, we had three little kids. My wife had always had a dream to become a physical therapist. By the way, she's in South Carolina wrapping up time with her mother who is battling breast cancer. Thank God there's, there's been a lot of breakthrough there when he's been serving her. But she always had a dream to be a PT, a physical therapist. We got married, business took us all over the country. And here we are in Fort Lauderdale planting a church, three little kids, and the Lord says, now's the time to go back and get your dream. Have you know, sometimes when he tells us to move, it doesn't look like it's the most convenient moment, right? But we did it. It wasn't easy, but we have no regrets. Church, let's live a life with no regrets. So if you just need someone to stand with you, I'm gonna actually ask a couple of our home fellowship peeps to come up, some of our leaders, if, if there's people here at the front. Let's just hang out for a little bit. If you just need someone just to stand with you and encourage you. God bless you guys. We'll see you next Sunday, Father's Day.